Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guys on the Salt in the Wound quest. Now, for this quest you need the following requirements. So you must have completed the prequel quest, which is Kenneth's Concerns, and obviously all the uh, quests leading up to that one. Uh, for skills, you will need level 60 defense, which cannot be boosted, level 50 constitution, 47 herb lore, 45 summoning, and 35 dungeoneering. You're also going to need to defeat a vary of enemies during this quest, however, you will also have other playable characters uh, that will fight alongside you, so you can um, basically skip fighting anything in this quest, however, it will make it a little bit more lengthy. So, obviously, the better combat you are, the easier this quest will be, and obviously, the better armor and weapon you have, the easier it will be. Um, only items you're going to need is probably some food uh, for lower level players and possibly additional food to heal your companions as well. So I'll leave that up to you, however much food you want to bring. Uh, and of course you will also need a ring of kinship uh, which will be needed uh, to start this quest off. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest starting point. So we need to head to uh, Demonheim uh, to go find the quest starting point. So the easiest way to get here is read uh, your Ring of Kinship, uh, use the Teleport to Demonheim option, and then we can head to the quest starting point from there. So we need to go find Kenneth, and Kenneth can be found on the far east side of the Demonheim Peninsula, uh, standing near Sonje and the Fremnic Shipmaster. Once you're near Kenneth, speak to him who has now grown up after spending some time with Bailey on the fishing platform and he's also learned some powerful magic spells. Uh, he will say that he's glad to have found you after having had contact with Satifi Kashin and he will want to talk in private and teleports a small distance away. So go west up the stairs and Kenneth will be waiting there. Talk to him and he will teleport two other helpers in, the fisherman partner from Kenneth's concerns Ezekiel and Satifi's niece Eva. Introduce yourself and talk to Eva again and agree to start the mission. Ezekiel will throw one of his Rubian bombs at the wall which will open up and the party will enter the dungeon. You'll see a cutscene which takes place in where um, Effin Lox slays a soul gazer and gets a hex hunter bow only for the uh, wall uh, near her to be blown up destroying the bow and killing her. Uh, and also resulting in Ezekiel becoming Skulled. So once in the dungeon you'll need to find a blue key, as the blue key will unlock the puzzle room that we need to go to and will be required to fight some NPCs. So um, basically the whole part of this quest is going to be um, yourself and the other characters sort of uh, navigating through different rooms and that and you control the different characters by clicking each of them respectively and you can choose them to either walk in a certain direction or attack a specific enemy uh, and there's also a couple of other buttons as well uh, one of them is a uh, regroup where all your characters will come back to where your character is currently standing and there's also a select all options if you want all three of the characters uh, to fight against one particular enemy you can use the select all option and then click that enemy. Uh, it's pretty easy, you won't have much trouble using the interface. So once you've uh, found the blue key and unlocked the puzzle room, you'll enter a room with a caustic gazer standing in front of a familiar dungeoneering puzzle. Uh, choose a hero, preferably the one with the most health, and your character will distract the gazer while the chosen hero must cross against the uh, gaps to the other side without coming um, into contact with the guardian sphere. Now one way to solve this puzzle is jump south across the first gap, then jump west twice, then jump south, then jump north, then jump east three times and then jump south two times and the puzzle will be completed. Once you're across the um, obstacles, inspect the Seeker of Truth and return across the gap. The uh, regroup button won't work here. One way to get back across is simply to have the Guardian Sphere capture the uh, chosen character which will hit him for 500 life points but will just save a bit of uh, time. After completing the puzzle, Kenneth will ask if you are ready to be teleported to the fishing platform. Say I'm ready and you'll be teleported there. So once you reach the platform, talk with Kenneth and he'll tell you that you need some ingredients for an anti-mind control serum. He says you will need some blood given freely. To get the blood, you simply punch Bailey and then respond so you don't feel pain. Then say no pain, prove it, and Bailey will take a shard of glass and cut his arm to prove that he no longer feels pain. He will give you the bloodstained glass as proof of this. Kenneth also tells you that you need a live specimen for the potion. So to get a sea slug, head east to the fishing spot and then lure the fishing spot. Don't try to actually take the slug as this will damage you some life points. And then start walking back to Kenneth and the slug will follow you. Kenneth will then daze and telegrab the slug for you and a dazed sea slug will appear in your inventory. 
Talk to him and he'll say that you have all the ingredients you need and will give you a seeker gland. You can either pick up the pestle and mortar or uh, the pestle and mortar in your tool belt will work and use any piece of the potion to make the anti-mind control serum. Talk to Kenneth to prompt your team to move to the cave entrance. Go west to the cave and enter the cave by talking to the slug frows and ask why can't we come in. Then, I'm not a stranger, I seek enlightenment in the joining. And finally, I wish to hear thee and the guards will let you enter the slug citadel. Now the slug consists of a series of rooms. You need to make your way with your party of adventurers through the rooms by solving puzzles. The rooms have a varying number of risen knights, some of which will need to be killed and some of which can be avoided. The members of your party will be healed to full health automatically when you move on to the next room. Unfortunately your character is not healed so you might want to use the food that you got with you. Please note if you log off you'll find yourself outside on Witchhaven near Jeb but all the completed runes will uh, remain completed and the killed risen knights will stay dead except the ones that the village people conjure. You'll have to walk yourself and your characters through all the completed rooms to return to the last room you were in before you logged out. Also, to make a character stay in or go to a specific point, simply click on the character and click where you want them to go, and the same principle applies to using them to knock out Witchhaven guards and killing Risen Knights or pulling levers. Also, always make sure that you click the character again to return control to your player or you'll find your character running aimlessly around the screen. Now it doesn't matter which characters you use for, um, for specific parts such as killing enemies and pulling levers um, but I will just give you um, some names just to allow it uh, to make it easy for you to keep track on what you need to do. So you'll notice in the footage that I kind of sort of um, work it out as I go along because the puzzle rooms aren't too difficult. Um, so what I recommend for the majority of this guide going forward is listen to the instructions I'm actually saying rather than watching what I'm doing on the screen. Obviously you can use that as a reference but I will give you specific instructions just to make it easy for you guys and we'll save you some time. So the first room has a number of gates blocking your way to the exit. There are levers which can be pulled to open the gates and the levers need to be opened in a particular order so you can progress. If you are spotted by a Witchhaven villager you will be frozen for a few seconds and a Risen Knight is summoned and attacks you. So like I said you can use any characters um, for these steps you want, I'm just going to use some names as an example um, so you can choose to follow this if you wish. So you want to leave Ezekiel by the Witchhaven Villager just north of the entrance and move the remaining two characters to the metal gate to the northeast. Make sure they stay there and don't follow you. Use Ezekiel to knock out the Witchhaven Villager and proceed south with your player. There is a safe spot by the narrow opening to pause before knocking out the other Witchhaven Villager. Then proceed into the room with the lever and pull it. The metal door to the north will now be open. You want to send Eva through but do not pull the lever yet. You then want to pull your lever again and knock out the villager again and go to the same safe spot and again use Ezekiel to knock out the other villager allowing your prayer to run north to Kenneth and Eva without being stunned and attacked by the risen knights. Bring Ezekiel to join your player and then use Eva to pull the lever to let you all in. Pull the lever again and run south east and then north to the exit. Some characters may lag behind and get attacked, simply click the regroup for them to catch up. And once you're at the end, exit through the cave to go to the second room. So the second room is similar to the first room in that a number of levers have to be pulled in a certain order to open the gates for your character to progress to the exit. So send everyone to the north as far as they can go and use your player to knock the villager out. You then want to pull the lever. Send Kenneth and your character in the room to the east. Then send Ezekiel to the western room and then send your character south and pull the lever. Send Kenneth into the easternmost room and pull the lever and have your character pull the southern lever again. Send Ezekiel west and then all the way south and pull the lever. Make sure Ezekiel knocks out the villager in his path or time it correctly so Ezekiel can run past the villager without being seen. You then want to make Kenneth pull the lever. Send Kenneth into the southern room on his side and pull the lever. Then send your character back to the central chamber with Eva. Make Ezekiel pull his lever and then send Kenneth back to the central chamber. Make Ezekiel pull his lever again and then send him to the central chamber too. You will need to knock out or sneak past the villager here again.
And now that your party is regrouped, go to the next room. So um, for the third room, killing all the Risen Knights will make the room easier and the easiest way is simply to do this yourself as you are likely much more powerful than your companions. You can rest while the others are defeating the Risen Knights if you need to raise your hit points. So you want to send Kenneth to mage the rangers on the central pillars and then to the northeast room to kill the risen knight. Leave him there. Then send Eva to the southeast and Ezekiel to the southwest, killing risen knights as needed. Have them pull the levers in this order. So northeast southeast and then southwest. Have your character run to the northwestern corner with a patrolling Witchhaven villager. You need to either sneak behind her and knock her out and then pull that lever. This will open all the gates in the middle of the room and the outer four gates. Have Eva pull her lever one last time in the southeast and then send your player to the newly opened gates and regroup characters and then proceed to the next room to the north. So in this fourth room, your character releases various waves of Risen Knights while trying to open the exit. The Risen Knights have to be killed in order to proceed. Unfortunately, your character is stuck and cannot fight, so you have to use the other members of your adventurous party to kill the Knights. So use your character to search the strange device and your character will become unplayable and Risen Knights will begin to appear one at a time. The Knights are not usually aggressive, so take time to plan. Once the first wave of three Knights are dead, your character will investigate the second hull. Two Knights will appear at a time for a total of six Knights in the second wave. Once the second wave is dead, a third wave will appear and two to three Knights will appear at a time for a total of nine Knights in the third wave. And then finally, continue on to the last room. So the final room is uh, the Mother Malum room and it's the climax of the quest. Once the cutscene is complete, you want to use Kenneth to speak to Brother Maledict who is located just to the west. Once the gate to the west is open, knock down the wall in the western chamber with Ezekiel and move Kenneth north. Place him as close as possible to Mother Malum while standing on the western ledge. Take control of Ezekiel and knock down the wall to the east and proceed north. There is a knight on route, either attack and kill him or just run straight past and position Ezekiel directly opposite Kenneth who is on the other side of the chasm. Take control of Kenneth again and attack Marva Malum once Ezekiel is in place. You will now have control of Eva. Talk to Mayor Hobbs and knock him out and then attack Malum and she will throw you over herself. Use Eva to move north of the statue and top of the statue. This will push the statue onto the Slug Queen, killing her. You can talk freely with any of the characters before leaving the cave of the Slug Citadel but it's not actually required for the quest and if you talk to Lucy the choice will not have any effect on the outcome. Leave the Citadel using the cave exit. After you've left the cave and you've gone through some dialogue, it will come up, congratulations, you've completed the Souls in the Wounds quest, you're awarded 2 quest points, 45,000 defense experience, 17,500 constitution experience, 15,000 herb lore experience, 12,500 summoning experience, 5,000 dungeoneering experience, 100 more bound ammunition or runes in Demonheim, raising the total to 225, 2 treasure hunter keys and 2 arts of ice. 
So there we are, quest complete. Overall, not a very difficult quest, um, even though sort of like the activity of getting through the different rooms uh, is a little bit long-winded. It's not that difficult to figure out. It's literally uh, using different series of levers to get your way through. I wasn't following any guide of any form when I was doing it, and I managed to get through pretty easily, so I was just kind of winging it. Um, so obviously, with the specific instructions I've given you guys, you shouldn't have much problem against that at all. As for the rewards, very decent, especially the uh, experience. You know, 45,000 defense experience is very generous. And also, the extra 100 bound ammo is very helpful in Demonheim, especially those of you who do a lot of dungeoneering, uh, predominantly round, obviously, ranged or magic. Um, you can now choose to have like 225 bound arrows, so you can always use that for range or the other swing side of it. If you're using magic, you could now have like 225 bound blood runes every time you start a floor, so you've only then got to worry about getting the elemental runes. It just makes things a lot easier in terms of using range and magic in the uh, dungeoneering. But yeah, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. However, if you do get stuck at all, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you as best I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye-bye.